Hi, I'm Steven. You can now watch UCF TV 24 hours a day on Bright House Digital Channel 1. Today's participants are Tony Major, and John Weishampel. We join their conversation in the Faculty Lounge. Secret compartments yeah. in the ring, and the ring had a flashlight, <laughs> all and right, all kind of stuff. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, it's it's a, not, yeah, it's, it's everywhere now. It's everywhere, yeah. you know what I mean? On well, the cell phones, I mean, the Dick Tracy right. you know, watches. Exactly. Well, yeah, well, we're there. <laughs> we're there, you yeah. know what I mean? So I see uh, certain films like that in that same, same mm -hmm. venue. You know, um, uh, what was the film about um, um, 2001? Oh, Space Odyssey. Space Odyssey, yeah, sure. you yeah. know what I mean, 2001, yeah. I mean, all those kinds of things. Uh, so, I mean, that's what kind of piques my interest, you know, yeah. those kind of things. And then other films that have uh, human stories and human relationships in terms of uh, how one person interacts with another person and, and uh, what they do with that interaction, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I'm also looking forward to the remake. Uh, Manchurian Candidate. Yeah, yeah, that, that looks yeah. interesting. That that's a interesting Denzel role. Right. So so here he plays, I guess the the person that's been brainwashed. I think. Right. Yeah. Right. You see. Yeah. So uh, back again, yeah. going to those yeah. theories about implantation <laughs> yeah. and brainwashing and so forth, and who controls who. You yeah. know, in terms of that reality. You know, sometimes you don't always have to implant things to control <laughs> people, but yeah. Um, yeah, those kind of films. You know. Uh, you know, and that's not to say I don't like, you know, the, the smaller film either, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, the, the independent films, mm -hmm. you know, and the small films. Um, I'm amazed at Monster, mm -hmm. you know, what was done with, uh, with that. Yeah. Um, I mean, well acted, well directed. I mean, you know, it just shows you what you can do when you really believe in something, you know, yeah. and, and you have a good story yeah. and, and uh, good actors. And so... Um, those small films that become big like that. Are, are yeah, there's this one one director who I, I always look for his films when they come out, John Sales, and I, I ah. just think his stuff mm -hmm. is always just, boy, what what a great story, well acted, you know, well directed, and it's just like you know, and they they're never you know major you know money makers, but I look at him and I just you know I have like a little take home message you know every time. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, I I remember. Again, my history goes back with him way back when he first started uh, out of New Jersey. Yeah. And uh, he did a thing on uh, breakdancing. <laughs> I think it was called Wow Thing or uh. something like that, you know. Because uh, I almost worked on it, you yeah. know, worked on that particular film. But yeah, because uh, I was involved at that time with some, some groups and stuff at the time in New York. But um, yeah, those kind of films and yeah. those kind of, you know, when you get certain directors who deal with certain issues yeah. and, and, and make those things happen, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's why it's too bad we lost, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Silence of the Lambs uh, director, you know, uh, uh, because he was dealing, you know, with the Philadelphia story and, and oh, Silence of the Lambs, okay. you yeah. know. I mean is it Dem? Is that yeah, Jonathan Demme, Demme, you know. Uh, now his brother is doing, you know, quite well, huh. but... Uh, you know those those type of films and those type yeah. of people are rare. I I went to school with uh, uh, Francis Ford, mm -hmm. you know Coppola. Where was that? At Hofstra. Okay. Yeah, Hofstra University was yeah. my undergrad mm -hmm. in, in in theater, and he was a theater major yeah. at Hofstra, and I knew then he was going to be. You know, I mean, he was a year or two ahead of me, uh -huh. but uh, he was always writing plays and, oh, yeah. and directing stuff and doing you know, doing things then, you know. Uh, and so um, those kind of people and those kind of directors, you know, and you see where, you know, where the substance comes from, you know, where they really want to deal with issues, you know, yeah. and deal with stuff, like uh, The Conversation. Yeah, that's that's know. a great one. Yeah, that's you a see. film that, uh, you know, you don't, you don't see, or that's with uh, uh, Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman. Yeah, 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 yeah I really yeah. like that. That was a, a good one. Well, I work with Hackman, too. 
Hey, yeah, where? Yeah, I work on the French Connection. Oh, man. man that's, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Roy Snyder and Gene yeah. Hackman on the French Connection uh, was a great experience for me. I learned a lot from Hackman. Yeah. 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 Uh, Cause it was a rough shoot. <laughs> yeah, right, right. A rough shoot, you know. Um, little stories of shooting in all of the actual locations that the story took place. Yeah, you know. Paris. It gets kind of rough. Isn't yeah, it? no, <laughs> I didn't go to Paris with it. <laughs> but Brooklyn, I, yeah, you know, underneath the Brooklyn Bridge, <laughs> you know, when it snow is up to here, you know, at three o'clock in the morning, you know. Uh, shutting off traffic on the Brooklyn Bridge in New York City <laughs> <laughs> at a rush hour. <laughs> it's not a pleasant thing to, I, to do, you when, know. When f my student, she just told me she was um, in the Keys when they were filming True Lies. Mm -hmm. And so what they did, you know, they had to shut off the, the big road that takes you out to Key West. Right. And what the, <laughs> to compensate for the, the irate drivers out there, they, they had to feed them, <laughs> you know. So they like, you know, oh brought yeah, in you the food, you know. <laughs> hey, sorry you're going to be stuck here for a few hours, but here, <laughs> have some food, you know. Well, I tell my students in, in, in the film department, I said, guys, when you make your budget, one of the most important things in that budget is craft service. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, never run out of coffee. Yeah. Okay, and make sure that you always, I don't care if it's nothing but peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, make sure you have some food <laughs> for the crew because yep. uh, a hungry crew will not shoot your film for you, you know. Yeah. So um, you'd be surprised how the little nuances stuff play a big part in terms of how <laughs> a film get made, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> some gaffer's tape <laughs> yeah. and some food, yeah. you know. What is a gaffer? I, I see that. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I, I see it on the credits, gaffer. I'm like, yeah, well. <laughs> the gaffer helps the electrician. Okay. You know, um, the DP yeah. has a person who's in charge of, of electricity and hanging the lights and like these lights and stuff in here, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so I don't recall now where that name came yeah, from, yeah. but, um, but um, they're pretty much the person who actually carry out the wishes of the director of photography which is the DP yeah uh, and then you have a grip the grip person is the person who pushes the dolly you know sometimes they're dolly shots and they move mm -hmm. you know the grip back and forth or lay rails where they put the rails down and then put them on the rail oh, yeah. track yeah. that looks like a railroad track you know so you get grip people that to, you know that handle the cameras and set the cameras up and do that and yeah. then uh, the grips are part of elect electrical the electrical crew, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, so you've been with with some of my favorite actors there. So uh, from from Robert De Niro, Danny Aiello, uh, Red Fox, you know, <laughs> classic. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Spent about seven years with Red. Uh, ended up becoming vice president of his corporation uh, for the last, I'd say, seven years of his life. You know, mm -hmm. and like I say, I ended up uh, negotiating most of his contracts uh, for uh, Harlem Nights. Mm -hmm. Uh, the last TV show, uh, The Royal Family with yeah. Della Reese and, and, and Red Fox. Uh, so it was a real, real interesting experience, you know. And, and, you know, one of the best experiences I had with him was uh, doing a movie with him and Dick Van Dyke. What was that? Was that uh, it was called, um, uh, name is That's the mind me. goes first. Yeah, you know. <laughs> 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 it was a movie of the week, too, you know. It was, it, it, the experience with the director wasn't that good, so that's why, it's, you know. Uh, but uh, with Dick and, and, and Red together, yeah. oh, you know, awesome, man. You yeah. know, like a hundred years of comedy. Yeah, you know, right, right. I mean, just, and the director going to try to tell them what's <laughs> funny. <laughs> well, that's, I, I know, kind of look at John Wayne type director said, no, do it my way, you know. <laughs> said, so Red, I mean, how do you tell Red Fox and Dick Van Dyke what's funny? Yeah, you know what I mean? That's right. It's you know, you, first of all, if you're smart enough, you let them do it yeah. anyway. Yeah. Even if you plan on not using it, you don't turn them off, you know, by not using it. But we shot it in Toronto yeah. in January. Oh, nice. You got a little yeah. chill there, huh? You got that right. <laughs> 17 below. <laughs> you know, your hands stick to the back of a truck, you know, that kind <laughs> of stuff. You know. So I try to bring all these experiences to my students, you know, to let them know that it's, it's um, the real world, you know, experiences mm -hmm. and say, it's not just about sitting back and, you know, and it's going to happen, you know. Yeah. You have to make things happen. You have to plan well in advance. Yeah. You know, and the, the better you plan, the smoother operation you're going to have in terms of shooting your film. But they think, you know, I'm here, you know, teach me and it's yeah. going to happen. You know, I'm saying, well, it don't really happen that way. Because even in, in when you lay out all the plans, there's always something that's going to go wrong. 
you know, the part of the crew don't show up or late or mm -hmm. miss a turn or whatever, you know, and you're out shooting. And I explained to them that time is money. Yeah. Because if you say you are producing a film and we out shooting it for you and we budgeted it, you know, to shoot it in X number of days and it's, I'm not getting those pages in the can every yeah, day. Right, right. I can't come back to you and say, well, look, I need a few more extra million dollars to go shoot this movie because uh, we messed up, yeah. you know what I mean? And then if we don't finish, you have no way of getting your money back. So, you know, trying to get students to understand that you learn the process, but also it's all those little small things that happen, you know, that you need to find a way to, to, to get across. But you can only do it if you plan ahead of time, yeah. you know. Because uh, when we were shooting a movie, um, uh, Brad Pitt's first movie that I explained, mm -hmm. uh, Across the Tracks mm -hmm. with Brad Pitt and Rick Schroeder, um, we were shooting in South Central L.A., and one of the schools was Compton, and the other one was um, Cent Centinella. Well, one school was the blue school, yeah. the Crips. Oh, right. <laughs> the other school <laughs> was the red school. And this is in reality. <laughs> so this is reality. Yeah. <laughs> and then you had an art director who came in and said, well, I want to po uh, paint this red school blue. Oh, bad. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> And we had a problem because this, the county was getting ready to dig up the rate, the, the track, mm -hmm. and we needed the track to run because it was about two brothers running track. And so what do you do? And you got a schedule, and you got people standing by, you got actors, so you have to find a way to convince in the county to, to delay a week, you know what I mean, of digging up the track so that you can get out and shoot and, and go. So we rearranged the schedule so we could shoot everything on that track first in the first week mm -hmm. and then move on. Yeah, yeah. You see. So, I mean, all those kind of things come up, you know, that you don't anticipate that when you first plan it, it was perfect. And yeah. then all of a sudden, something goes haywire. I had a student of mine at um, NYU when I was teaching the graduate program at NYU um, who scheduled and used a SAG actor for a shoot. And I explained to him, you better have a backup because if the SAG actor gets a job, <laughs> yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry, he's yeah. not coming to your shoot. Yeah. And sure enough, um, he come back, Mr. Major, uh, I need to work out some more shooting days. I said, well, there are no more shooting days. Yeah. Uh, the schedule is tight. Every student had a set amount of days to shoot in. And uh, he said, well, my actor didn't show up, so I, didn't, I couldn't shoot. And he didn't, never called. I said, well, I explained that to you, you know, yeah. in terms of, you know, making sure that you have a backup for a SAG actor. Uh, guess who the actor was? <laughs> Malik Yoba, oh, yeah. <laughs> who got the call that yeah. day to come and do New York Undercover. Hell yeah, he made <laughs> was a mean, choice there. Big choice, <laughs> right? I'm going to go shoot a student <laughs> film that I'm not getting paid for yeah. or whether I'm going to go do New York Undercover, yeah. okay? So um, at least he could have called him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I met Malik and I meant to mention it to him, you know, but uh, nice guy, nice yeah. fellow. He's probably just so excited you sure. know, in terms of getting the part. but. Uh, you know, those are kind of things that you try to relate to the students, you know, that we have. But we have some real talented students, you know, who come through, uh, as you mentioned earlier, in terms of um, uh, the creativity. Oh, yeah. You know. Well, I, I was impressed. And I, so I didn't know, I've been, you know, watching, you know, I, I, I'm a fan of film and, and certain mm -hmm. TV shows. And, and I didn't realize some of the UCF connections that were out there. Uh, the woman who's in Curb Your Enthusiasm, she's the, the main actress in that. I, I somehow I opened up an alumni magazine. I said, oh, oh what do you know? Uh, the one gentleman who was in, uh, I guess he was in Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, he was in some other films as right, well. And right, I was like, wow, I didn't, right. you know, I didn't realize that, you know, some UCF He was in this, and he stopped by the office about two months ago. Really? <laughs> yeah, oh, he yeah. stopped by the film office and yeah. said hello to folks. Oh, that's know. neat. Yeah, yeah so. it's, it's great. We're, we're getting a little UCF <laughs> I would use the word <laughs> click. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the other universities have already, you know, uh, it's beginning to happen. Yeah. And one thing, one program we have is a, um, uh, a UCF um, summer internship program that takes place at UCLA. Oh, okay. And yeah. so the students get a chance to go out and spend six weeks. It's actually a credit. They can mm -hmm. get a course credit for it. And they spend the, s the summer in uh, uh, UCLA and they l actually live at UCLA. And they go out and do internships in different uh, production companies mm -hmm. throughout Hollywood, and um, film, music, you know, management, casting, you know, all those different. And they get that real world experience. 
And so it's great for them. And then uh, what uh, Sterling has done, you know, who's the director of the, the school, he um, has set it up so that they can have an alumni uh, meeting. Yes. You know, and Bob Jones goes out with them, and he stays with them and teaches them the whole summer. Mm -hmm. You know, they go out, and then they come back and have classroom sessions on what yeah. happened during the day. And uh, so those students, like you mentioned earlier, who are established in Hollywood get a chance to come and meet the students who are now coming out there to do the internships. Mm -hmm. And so what we're hoping to do is establish a great uh, mentorship program so that we have now UCF students mentoring other students who are there, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, who are coming there, you know, in terms of film. And eventually one day hopefully to combine that with the theater department because there are a lot of uh, theater students who are now in California and mm -hmm. going to California uh, looking for work as actors. So wouldn't it be great to have this this UCF empire, you know, of, of, yeah. of uh, performers and actors from UCF, both there and also hopefully, you know, here in Orlando, yeah. we can start our industry. Um, in fact, the dean's daughter uh, was a theater student here, and hmm. she graduated, and she now lives in, uh, in Hollywood wow. and uh, doing well, I understand. And there, there's one former student who is producing her own film hmm. that she's shooting now. She couldn't get a part, so she wrote her own part. Part. She went and got the uh, uh, money for it, hired her crew, mm -hmm. and now she's shooting her own film to showcase herself. You see. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it's a great, you know, thing that they're doing, and the training that they get here is, is phenomenal, man. The training they get in the theater department, the training they get in the film department, the digital media department, you know, uh, is really, really top notch. You yeah. know, which is one of the reasons that I came when I first came because coming in from Hollywood in New York, you don't want to come someplace and then invite your friends and say, <laughs> you yeah. know, this, uh, you know, Tony, uh, you, this amateur stuff, you know what I mean? <laughs> but no, there was really some top-notch performances here and, and, and professional. And so when I do invite people to come, which I have done, they just go back with their mouths open, you know. They don't know the talent that's here in Florida yeah. and the kind of stuff that's going on at UCF, you know. So I really, really, um, you know, uh, it's heartwarming, especially when you see your students leave and, mm -hmm. and really find a road and a path to what they really studied and what they really wanted to get into, you know. Well, I, when, when the Blair Witch, you know, hit UCF, I, uh, I really did feel kind of a, a sense of pride. I really right. did. You know, I, I liked the film, and, and I just, I think I was just so impressed with the students. I mean, this is a student film, you know, and, and so you have to figure, you know, they must have had some guidance along the way to just kind of push them or direct them, but right. phenomenal in terms of their creativity and put it together. I mean, uh, I mean, oh I just yeah. can't imagine, yeah. you know, doing that. You know, I'm, I'm thinking back to my college days. Well, yeah, f making a film, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no <laughs> you know, I'm not doing that. Uh, but I just, it really, I mean, it, you know, made the cover of Newsweek Time, and and you just look at that and you say, these were college kids. Hey, yeah. I mean the creativity. The the uh, fortunately for me, I was uh, serving as the acting program director of the film department when that film hit big. You know, the dean had asked me to come over and serve. You know, for a year. So when that hit, I felt the full impact of it. You know, and um, I mean it was amazing because having connections to the real world, knowing some of my friends in Hollywood and what was happening, it really set Hollywood back on its ear. Yeah. I mean, there were a lot of executives in, <laughs> in publicity yeah. <laughs> who were scared or either lost their jobs because they said, wow, you know, these little college kids go out and make $200 million, oh, yeah? you know what I mean? And here we're paying you these big salaries <laughs> and you can't make this movie, uh, you know. Uh, so it was real uh, uh, smart of them and ingenious, man, in terms of um, the, um, uh, uh, the publicity and, oh, and the promotion the of the way it. they use the, the web w and, oh. and and just the hype, you know. Right. Was, you right. know and I think they were so clever. I right. mean, just so in very very clever Absolutely. in how they did it, you know. And I I had people, you know, not even knowing that the film was made at UCF, tell me about it, you know, mm. because it, I didn't watch it. It took a long time for me to actually see it, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, they're just telling me how 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 it scared <laughs> the bejesus out of them. You know, it's like yeah, you know. And actually, I was. I, I 
before I came to UCF, I lived in that kind of greater Washington, D.C., Maryland oh. area where this was supposed to take place. Okay. And so I, you know, I kind of knew the woods. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, it was kind of <laughs> nice. It did a good job. Yeah, man. They, they did an excellent job with it. And, uh, and see, that's the type of thing to inspire students. And you, you'd be surprised of how the uh, uh, enrollment here oh, just shot sure, up, you sure. know, like, you know, everybody wanted yeah. to come to UCF yeah. at that point. Because one good thing about it, everywhere they went, every show they went on, they always mentioned they were UCF yeah. alumni, you yeah. know. I and mean, they seemed like a great bunch of great, guys. Great, great guys. Yeah. And they always said UCF, UCF. Yeah. You know, it's just like now with Miss America. Yeah. yeah. You know, we have Miss America here, and she's saying UCF, yeah. UCF. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a great I'll thing I'll tell you what I'm, I'm most proud of with UCF. Or, you know, I, I look at it and I say, man, the biggest change that I saw at UCF is the ability that they got a Rhodes Scholar. You know, they're getting a Rhodes Scholar, I'm thinking, Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's the big time. Yeah. You know? and, yeah. And the ability to attract that kind of student and help direct that student. Right. You know, uh, to, for them to achieve that. I just, right. uh, uh, that, that's impressing. You well, know? you know what else is, is, is impressive is we have our students go through um, an evaluation process at the end of e every year to see whether they should stay in the program mm -hmm. or how they're doing in the program, whether we should kick them out or whatever. Yeah. And when you go through this process and you start realizing that a lot of the students have 4.0s, 3.9, grade mm -hmm. point average. I mean, these, I mean, these are some brilliant students, you know, in, 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 in digital media, in film, in theater. Now, I mean, these are areas, too, that you say, how do they do it? Because they don't have any time that's their own, you know. I mean, like in theater, uh, when I was in the theater department, you know, we rehearsed from 7 to 11 every night, Saturday from 9 to 10, 9, uh, uh, 9 to 5, Sundays from 2 to 10, mm -hmm. okay? And then the shows were, <laughs> were, were Thursday through Sunday. Where do they find time to study? You yeah, know, where yeah. do they find time to, to, to even, and some of them even had job, part-time jobs. Yeah. Not only that, but they also had to put in 90 hours work behind the scenes in, on each show. <laughs> and then you come to the film department, and, you know, I mean, it might take you two hours just to edit, you know, two seconds of a yep, film, yep. you know. So these films, these students are there 24-7, yeah. you know, around the clock. You know, when everybody else is home, you know, at 3 o'clock in the morning, they're there editing the film, you know. Well, this, and I they still come up with a 3.89, 4.0 averages. I'm yeah. saying, wow, you know. I, I met one of the students uh, from, from, I think he's animation, but he... Uh, he was doing the 24-7, and, and then he worked with me on, in addition to it. So, and he was making a short claymation film. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in claymation, <laughs> you're manipulating every second or, or even maybe smaller, I don't right. know, but, you know, just so many shots, and it's so tedious. Right. And he was literally not sleeping, you know, for right. a few days. And then he'd come to my lab meeting, and I'd look, Sean, you know, you're looking like you could use some sleep. You know? <laughs> but then he showed me the final product last week, and it was really fun. I mean, it, you could tell there's a lot of s time that went into it, a lot of craftsmanship, and this guy is just very talented. You know, and, and it, was, it, it all kind of came together. I was like, man, you know, that, that's really neat. Well, that's why, you know, we try in recruitment, we try to find students who love it, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because if you don't love it, you know, you can get into it thinking it's easy and thinking it's this and don't realize the time that goes in. in, in because when, you, when the audience comes and see a stage play, they don't know how many hours went into rehearsal, mm -hmm. you know. Um, um, Jerry uh, Klein, who's the tech director, he can tell you about the hours we put in yeah. just doing a dry paper tech, you know, <laughs> you know, 15, 16 hours just to get every little detail right. And then in film, the same thing, like I said about editing. So if you don't love it, then, um, you know, it's not the profession for you. Go mm -hmm. do something else, you know, ma major in, you know, something else. Not, not that anything is any less important or less, you know, uh, demanding, mm -hmm. but the time element is just different. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the rewards are not there other than the fact that you put in the time doing it. Yeah. So the students have to learn that this is how, um, this is my life. I, I can't do anything else. You know, I used to tell students in theater, if you can do something else, go do it. And they said, what are you saying? I was, well, what I mean is, you know, if your love and heart is saying, well, I'm going to do this, but, then you should go do the but, mm -hmm. you see, because if it's, 
you know, tunnel vision, that doesn't mean that you don't have the ability and the talent to do something else. But if you're not focused in on it, like you said, a student and paying attention to details, it's not the profession for it, you know. Um, you got to love it. You got to eat and sleep it. And some of these students, like you said, I mean, they just eat and sleep it yeah. and have a, have a ball doing it, you know. And uh, you know. What I've, I've seen is I've seen some students who, you know, their talent, I think, has has exceeded their teachers because, you know, they're, they're coming in and, <laughs> right. you know, they, they – you know, and this is I'm seeing more you know the computer end because some right. I, I see some people doing some computer animation, and uh, they're coming in and their their ability to work on this they're they're able to dedicate you know right. all their time and right. understanding how this software works how to produce these models and all this stuff, right. and very quickly these students are just surpassing their teachers. I mean, right. it's like they they know how to do things, <laughs> you know, because that's what they're living. Right. You know. Well, it's amazing too, and you said your biology, yeah. right? that you would never think of hooking up biology and film or biology and theater yeah. or something. But like you say, you're already working with some of the students in sure. digital media. Sure. I mean, there's this overlap, you yeah. know, that quote the old, I, I think, kind of academia don't recognize sometimes is that interdisciplinary uh, um, the medium that can take place between two yeah. opposites, you know what I mean? Well, I, I think that's where the interesting things happen. Right. I think I think the interesting questions, the interesting uh, advances are happening because we're starting to merge things. I mean, uh, Finding Nemo, okay, uh, Finding Nemo, you know, big Pixar right. hit. Well, there was a lot of biology in right. Finding Nemo. Right. I mean, their ability to, char to characterize certain behaviors of, uh, of, of fish species and invertebrates, it really was rooted in biology. And it was really kind of cool, you know. And, right. and then the computer animation and, you know, the, the, the voiceovers, you know, it really came together in a nice story. You know? mm -hmm. And maybe there's some conservation take-home message, too, that, you know, you don't go out there catching tropical fish right. all the time. So maybe, <laughs> maybe there was a nice thing, maybe. Right. Yeah. But, you know, and, and I'm sure with the, you know, with the new students, they'll come up with other ways to find, you know, uh, uh, the intermingling of, of our particular uh, disciplines, you yeah. know, yeah. Uh, biology, film, especially with now with the digital age. It's, it's so much easier, man. You know, when I was coming along, the only way to get your film scene was to get it distributed into, uh, uh, fe you know, uh, a big movie house. And um, I did a feature some years ago, and it got distributed, you know, worldwide and internationally, and did quite well. Uh,